All right, so last time we finished stippling in our sketchbooks, um, you should have your value scale from one to 10, and then your five objects shaded accurately. Um, one thing that I would like to show you in just a moment is um, the fact that I don't have any outlines. So now that I've drawn out my pencil shapes, I should be able to completely erase all of my pencil after I've drawn in or shaded rather with my shading technique of the ink to show the difference of value. So remember I'm always talking about the shading and lines that you see as differences of values. Those are edges, not lines. So you can tell that I didn't use my Sharpie to make lines. I used it to imply lines with a difference of value. So this is what you should have finished last time. Um, if you don't have time to finish in class, you need to finish this outside of class. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the next technique called scumbling. Okay. So same thing, we're gonna do our value scale down here. This is scumbling. So make sure you label it for me, okay? Um, once again, we're gonna have our sphere, light source, our cube with the parallel lines, We had a cylinder, and you can also choose your light source to go in a different direction too. It doesn't have to be the same direction each time. Okay, we have a cylinder, a pyramid. and a cone. Okay. So just using my eraser, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm ready for the Sharpie. Remember with Sharpie, it could bleed through your paper, so you may want to put something in between here so that way it doesn't go on to the next page. That's up to you. I have a few dots here that were left over from my stippling page on the other side, so um, just be aware of that. So the idea of scumbling, it's almost like scribbling, but it's scribbling with intent, okay? So I'm gonna start by filling in the 10 spot, the most shaded, and I'm just gonna make scribbly lines, but I'm doing it in an intentional way to fill in that space. You can do curly cues, figure eights. Since I know it needs to be darker, remember the concept with ink is that the closer things are together, the darker they're, they're gonna appear. Uh, the more randomized your scribbling is, the more natural it's going to look. You can kind of see on the top where I went in tight circles and lines looks a little bit like chain mail, chain link. Um, down here it looks a little bit more um, natural and abstract because I kind of went all over the place. So um, try to keep it loose. There's no pattern to it, but I am wanting to fill in that space. So just like with stippling, anywhere I see these little gaps, I'm going to make little scribbles in it. And you're not going to fill it in solid, you're just going to make those spaces fill in. Go a little bit lighter on the next one. Trying to stay within my line so that way it looks a little bit neater. You don't want a very tight grip on your pen when you do scumbling. It'll make, make it look too uniform, make it too, look too much like a pattern. I'm just going back over wherever I see those gaps, just like last time.
It doesn't always have to be a continuous line. You can pick up your pen if you want to and place it back down. Okay, I want to stop here because my 8 and my 9 are starting to look really close, so I may actually want to fill in my 9 a little bit more without making it look too close to my value of 10. Remember, it's all about spacing. Further apart looks lighter, closer together looks darker. You can have sharp angles, you can have some curly cues. You're just trying to fill in those spaces. You can see I'm going back once I realize that I need to go darker in these compared to my one. I can go back and do that. And I'm still wanting to keep my edges in between the values as much as possible without making them into just lines to divide it. And then just like before, we're going to do the same thing up here as well with our objects. So um, I'll show you on the cube, and then I want you to fill in the rest on your own as well. So this should be our darkest area since it's getting the least amount of light. So I know that my lines are going to be tighter together. They're going to be close. And then over here, it's going to get some ambient light. Over here, it should get more because my light source is up higher. And just like with our practice before, as we get further out, our shadows become lighter and lighter. As we get closer, it's going to be darker. As we get further out, it's going to be lighter. So same thing as before, I want you to fill in all of these objects just the same way. Looking at your light source, looking at where the darkest area is going to be, where those lighter areas are going to be. And then you're just going to keep overlapping. Now as you build, it should keep that same value where you've already made your marks. Notice I keep going over my shadow area trying to make it a little bit darker. I'm also doing some of my scribbles in a little bit of a contour emphasizing the fact that it's a form. 